church and I want to get on and talk about the, the, ch the church's attitude um, but can you say first of all do you face any problems under the religious hatred um, uh, idea and some you know the law that never got passed but there were things do, do you have problems with that when you as a evangelical Christian are trying to witness in Golders Green um, we've had one or two problems I mean we, we, we run a bookstore which we do at um, Golders Green Road and there was a man who orthodox Jewish man who came along who said he was from the Barnet Council and we checked out he wasn't but <laughs> he said we needed a license to be there and uh, then when we didn't move a couple of few months later, he came along and turned the table over. Really? And got the police onto us and said that we were harassing people going by, um, which we weren't. I mean, all we did was stood there, and if people wanted to talk to us, they, they could talk did, to us. Yes. And uh, yeah. eventually, um, the police did come and say that we, we actually shouldn't be there. <laughs> and we had, well, this was actually not a real policeman, it was one of these, what do you call it, community policemen. Community, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I challenged this, and <laughs> eventually, actually wrote to our MP and I said, you know, really we're doing exactly the same as the Labour Party does in Finchley Central. <laughs> and still and stands there and gives people right. literature if they're interested. And right. He said he couldn't see the problem. Yeah. Then got on to the Chief of Police and Chief Inspector at Golders Green Police Station and he said, as long as you don't obstruct the pavement and don't yes. harass people, there's no there's problem. There's no problem with it at all. Uh, so we had a minor scuffle, but it, it wasn't a major right. thing. I haven't had any people accusing us of religious hatred. Right. Would, actually, we did have a lady standing by saying these people are handing out anti-Semitic leaflets, and yeah. she then got the police to come down, and the police read one, actually didn't have a word right. about Jews for <laughs> against <laughs> actually in that case. But, and, but and that's it, isn't it? It, it? It's the way that we do it that yeah. is important. Sure. And yeah. yes, you, you, we're not to harass people. We're, yeah. we're, we're not to sort of stand in front of them and demand they talk to us. But it is to reach out in love, isn't it? Yeah. With, with um, that. I think... I mean, I, I had some dialogue with... In fact, it even got into one of the columns in the Jewish Chronicle on this, right. and uh, I said, you know, that you know, we're interested in free speech, and <laughs> uh, we're simply presenting a person view. And the man on the Jewish Chronicle actually put this. He said, well, the, and I said also, we actually we do pay for and support the yeah. existence of the state of Israel. Right. And <laughs> Great. And that, that that got in the Jewish Chronicle. Yeah, it did. Great. Um, can we move on to this aspect of the church and? Um, I suppose when I was first saved um, and I became a Christian 40 odd years ago, I actually didn't hear initially anything about the Jewish situation uh, uh, at all. And it, it wasn't something that, uh, that, that was even on the horizon for me at, at, at that point. And none of the history of my previous like my previous life, not the one that <laughs> but growing up uh, had I dealt with that. I then got to a situation where sort of everything became Israel for a while and I had to struggle through that and come to a right. I think from what you said before, is your feeling that much of the church doesn't have a balanced view over the whole area of the, of the Jews and, and what's happening today? Yeah, I think so. I mean, in relation to Jewish understanding of Jesus, the biggest problem we have is church history, of course, and um, I think I should just mention one or two things about this, because many people don't, do. aren't, aren't aware Please that do. um, you know, the early church was all Jews, and they, in the book of Acts we read how Peter had to be persuaded by the Lord to go to Gentiles. Um, but as time went on, and particularly with the rise of, after the conversion of Constantine and the church becoming the state church, uh, the Jews became the Antichrist and you know they were the group of people who didn't believe in Jesus and then you had the whole thing about the Jews killed Jesus, they're under a curse and all of this distortion of New Testament teaching so that um, as far as most Jewish people were concerned Christianity became the religion of the enemy and right. to go over to become a Christian was to join the other side and uh, you know, I mentioned this debate which took place when in the Middle Ages debates took place under the auspices of the Catholic Church in which Jews were basically either had to submit and admit they were wrong or were hum publicly humiliated. So there was kind of a um, persecutions and inquisition, pogroms in, in Russia, attacks on Jewish people in the name of Jesus. So you have a whole history of Christian anti-Semitism uh, which is based on a distortion of the New Testament, taking a few verses from John about you of your father the devil and all that kind of stuff right. which is out of context and missing the point. 
So there's that whole area. Um, then with the Reformation, I mean, there were some, there were some early reformers who really saw the place of Israel and uh, back even in the 16th century prophesied, that, or not prophesied, but they saw from Bible prophecies that there'd be a return of the Jews to Israel and um, blessings upon Israel. So, you, and that developed, especially in the 19th century in England, um, where there was a very strong movement to restore Israel, which I guess some of the modern things like the missions which came out, Judges' Ministry amongst the Jews, Messianic Testimony, right. Prayer for Israel, all had their roots in uh, this kind of movement to restore Israel and to mm -hmm. see the Lord come back to Zion and to see a reconciliation between the Jewish people and the Lord Jesus. Um, now, of course, for a lot of the churches took on what was basically going right back to Augustine and Oregon replacement theology that all the prophecies of the Old Testament relating to the return of the Jews to Israel and blessings upon Israel actually should be now conferred to the church. So the Jews coming from the north, south, east, and west of the land is reinterpreted as the Gentiles coming, coming from the north, south, east, and west of Jesus. Right. So, and I would say that most of our theological colleges today teach re re replacement theology, basically. So mm. most of the pastors going into churches. So we have that whole aspect. See, that when I'm reading the Old Testament, I, I, I read concerning promises concerning Israel and cause as everlasting. Mm -hmm. If I then sort of say, well, they're not everlasting, they're now to somebody else, uh, is, is that the worst damaging thing or are, are there other areas that are a problem here? Yeah, and I, I think it's like, you know, the story about the U.S. president who had problems chewing gum and walking in a straight line at the same time. There are <laughs> certain things heard this one. <laughs> you have to hold in tension. I mean, there are elements where I'm a replacement theology believer because I believe that the New Testament has replaced the Old Test the, old, the New Covenant has replaced the Old Covenant. Uh, so that means that if somebody comes to me in gold is green and wants to know peace with God, I wouldn't send them down the road to the synagogue. I'd invite them to come to our fellowship at the bridge because right. we can tell them about Jesus who has replaced the covenant of the old covenant and the, the sacrifice of Jesus has replaced the uh, animal sacrifices of uh, Leviticus, uh, the priesthood of believers, true believers has replaced the Kohanim, the priests of the Old Testament. So there is a sense in which all of us believe in replacement theology. Right. But what has not been replaced is the elements of the everlasting covenant which God made with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Right. Now, the two things which God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, Abraham first of all, but repeated to Isaac and Jacob, were that they would have a multitude of descendants, as many as the stars in heaven and the sand on the seashore, and they would have the title deeds of inheritance of the land upon which they were a stranger. So there was a relationship between the Lord, the people, and the land. Now that, I believe, has not been replaced. And uh, this is where we see you know, in the New Testament where Paul says in Romans 9 to 11 that there is a future for Israel and he says the gifts and calling of God were without repentance. That means that God hasn't changed his mind on those, those elements and the fact that Paul could write in Romans 11 that there is a future for Israel, that all Israel will be saved, uh, has to imply that Israel is going to remain as a people. Um, and you know, the Christian interpretation that that means the church is, is nonsense because mm -hmm. in the context it has to be talking about mm -hmm. Israel as a people. So therefore there has to be a continuation of the Jewish people. Now the prophecies we already looked at, Ezekiel 36 and many others in the Old Testament speak about a ingathering of the Jewish people in the last days to the land of Israel. And this is where I guess the whole controversy comes up. Yes. Is Israel an accident of history? Or right. is it a fulfillment of prophecy? Yeah. Now, when I look even at the historical elements, the whole issue of Israel actually is, goes against normal history. I mean, even going back to the Marxist thing, uh, Marxism cannot explain the continuation of the Jewish people and the return of the Jews to Israel. Right. Didn't fit in with their view of history. Doesn't fit in actually with most views of history. So a people should be scattered, dwell amongst other people, preserve their identity, and then go back to the land from which they came, even speak the language again, revive the language, is a unique event.